Okay, all right. This is going to be my new dock box. I've been looking around for a tackle box I can put in the dock. Now, I don't know what I need to do. I thought I might just take this thing and fill it up full of baits. Just start pulling baits off the wall and fill up full of baits. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, the reason I got this box right here, I've been looking for these, and I think I finally found this at Lowe's, is it's got these grooves in it and where I can put uh, bungee cords through here and maybe wrap them around the picnic table or I might put some little clips down on the, uh, on the picnic table. I can fasten them too with those little short bungees. I'll take a few bungees down there. We'll kind of figure out some way to make it last and then I'll figure out a better way. But what I want to do is I'm going to pick out some tackle boxes. You know, I took out my tournament tackle since I'm not fishing tournaments anymore. And this is a lot of it right here. I haven't sorted all of it. I've got a lot of big boxes that are gone. I've got one, two, three, four big boxes. Well, really, those are big ones too, I guess. Maybe I got seven or eight. Well, maybe I got a dozen big boxes left. <laughs> but I got all these little boxes. These little boxes were boxes that I carried in my ranger boat for fishing tournaments. And so what I want to do is I'm going to pick me out a few of these and I'm going to put them in here. And, uh, and I'm going to uh, carry this down to the dock and that way then I'll have a, a, a tackle store right here in this one box down there. And uh, we'll just start looking through here and see what I think I need. What's in this box right here? Oh, this is Roadrunner heads. This is horse head jigs right there. And we're probably going to need that down there because we do fish those a lot. So I'll tell you what I think I'll do. I think I'll take this one. Now I want to relabel these. I'll go in here and, well, I won't do it right now, but I'm going I'm to... I'll relabel them and I'll put them down in there. But that's what the deal is. It's going to set them either that way or the other way or whatever. I'm going to take that one. Let's see what this box here is in it. This box, this box has got, it's got a few crankbaits, some lipless crankbaits, deep crankbaits, a couple of deep ones, some red ones. I'll take that box too. <laughs> what do y'all think? That looks like a good one, don't it? I'll take that box also. Ah, uh, I'll keep going. These are big rattle baits, it says. Don't know how big they are. We really probably won't throw the big rattle baits down there too awful much. You know, the problem that I've got with most of my tackle boxes, as you can see, is that is big rattle baits. It's big giant rattle baits. Uh, but I've got other baits in them too. There's a deep smoothie. I need to put it somewhere. That's a good one right there. That's my favorite color. I don't know how that got in there. What is that? Oh, this is Tommy Monsieur Jigs right here. Tommy Monsieur Jig Box. I think I'll take that one down there with me. Uh, TRDs and Ned Rigs. Lightning likes to throw Ned Rigs. I think I'll take those little jigs down there. Uh, top water and little crankbaits. Uh, might take that one. What is this? Some soft plastic. Ooh, it's all kinds of soft plastic out there. It's kind of a nice box. I think I'll take that. It's got some critter baits. Oh, all kinds of nice stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff to use on the end of jigs. I'll take that. Some big heavy weights. I need to take some plastic some weights down there for the I think I'll take that box. Okay, I'm getting there. Frogs, yep, I'm gonna take frogs. Gotta have a frog box down there. Get those right now. Uh, those are all kinds of little trailers to put on the end of those horse head jigs. Look at that, I think I'm gonna take that. That that would be kind of handy down there to have. I'm hoping this box is pretty waterproof. Alabama rigs. You bet your bass I love bass fishing. <laughs> and that's just kind of a little Pope Free stuff. I think I might take that. Now I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll work on these, I'll work on these boxes some, and uh, I'll work on these boxes some, and, and uh, put some more baits in them. I just got to have some place to start. And yeah, some top water baits. A little underspin. Okay. 
some spooks, underspin, some spinner baits, uh, just a little bit of everything. I end up I end up taking brand new boxes and I'll just start throwing stuff in them. And uh, I don't know, I don't don't need that down there. Well, that's a little bit of everything. That's one of those potpourri type boxes. That might be a good one to throw in there. Jigs. Lots of jigs. I already got one box of jigs in there. And that's just assorted cranks. Assorted crankbaits. All kinds of little crankbaits. I'm going to take that one. Now, this is all I'm going to take to start with. Uh, that. This is all I'm going to take. For one thing, I'll get to... Oh, it's already heavy. I guess it ain't heavy. I won't be able to carry it. But, you know, I made a little bit of dent in them. So let's run down there to dock real quick. I'll grab a rod and reel, and we'll make a few casts. You never know, we might catch a fish. I caught two down there yesterday, both giants. One over seven pounds, one over five pounds. But that's right before dark. So we'll, we'll grab a jacket and run down there and uh, at the dock because it's uh, pretty chilly out there today. And run down there and kind of see if we can figure this out. I'll throw a few bungee cords in there, see if we can't figure out. Our new dock tackle box, yeah! Come on, Lucy. Come on, Lucy. We got some tackle boxes. Dang, this thing's heavy. I'm glad I didn't get a bigger box to put down here at the dock. This thing's heavier than a pickup bed full of opera singers. Opera's not over till the fat lady sings. All right, here's what I got in mind. Now, I throwed me a bunch of bungee cords in there. Need near all of them, I don't think. Throw some bungee cords in there. And probably what I'll actually end up doing, I didn't have any up there in my toolbox, but what I'll probably will actually end up doing is putting me some, putting me some uh, little clips on there, like I've got down here for my swim ladder. See these deals right here? All I do on those, I put my swim ladder in there, flop it over the side, and that's all you need to do. I can put some of those on this table, and all I'll need to do is just, uh, hi Lucy. All I'll need to do is just pass them over, but I think, for right now, probably, I got backlash. Take some of these long ones. I think right now, I can actually just put that over like that. Can't really that those won't go through there, so I was thinking I probably could just put that over like that. Come around under here, under that, pull it right back up there. Now that's solid, it won't move. The only problem is it's just down here at one end. <laughs> but that's sort of what I got in mind. But I can put some little deals on here and use little short ones, little short bungee cords. And uh, because again, these will not go through the little slats. And I thought maybe they might. So I'm gonna have to figure out some way to do that, but uh, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be too, too awful difficult to figure out. If I could somehow get these down through there. But none of them will go. But that's what I got in kind of mind. I guess in the meantime, and it's so heavy, so heavy actually. It's so heavy actually that that I think it'll it'll just stay there. I think it'll take an awful lot of wind for it to blow off. But uh, yeah, I can actually slide that down to there. Slide that one down the middle. And that would at least hold my that would hold that on. All I need is a little all I need, I need to put me some holders of some kind on there, and I think I'll do that. A little too short. I'm a little too short. Bad deal when it's too short. But, that will get me by. In the time being, 
can't blow off of there. I guess it could blow off of there. But I will fix that up where I can fasten that down to the top of this and that way Dan will come down here and just go fishing. While I'm down here going fishing, since I'm here, I think I'll make a few throws. Whoa, 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 here we go. Yeah, well, he thumped that jig. I mean, he thumped that jig. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, getting you a dock tackle box. Proud to have that tackle box down here. That'll be a moving project, that tackle box. I'll be adding stuff to it. Oh, look at that big fish. Look at that big fish. He's a nice one. Not a giant, but a really nice one. Looky there. Look at that. That's a nice one right there. Not a giant, but a nice one. The only thing is the water's a little low, so hard to, hard to reach down there. That is a beauty right there. That's that little jig. The bark smash on that jig. Yeah, that's a beauty right there. That is a beauty. That's uh, that makes a dozen I've caught now this year off the pier. Woo, that's some cold sugar. That is some cold sugar. That's a beautiful bass. Not a giant. I thought he was bigger than that. My baby. I'm gonna have to make another throw out there. I was about to get my crankbait. Make a few throws with my crankbait. That's about 20 feet deep out there. I throw it out there and I peel my line down. I've got 50 pound high seas braid on here. It's one of our new Blaze Series rods. Uh, we're gonna be doing a video on these, but one of the cool things is we built the hook holder into the handle. Right below the reel is where you can hook your hook into. So you don't have a hook holder up here that gets in your way, cuts your fingers and does all of that. It's built right into the side of that that rod. Actually, I kind of wish we'd put a, a hole in that in that too. Could have a, a double hook over there that you could use that one, particularly on really large, really large type type baits. But that one right there works pretty good. It worked for everything I put on it so far. And of course, I hook them back in my reels a lot. Really shouldn't do that, but uh, about everybody I know does it. There's another one, another one, same spot. I'm hitting a little piece of brush out there. Exact same spot. <laughs> I haven't been fishing in the middle of the day like this. Maybe I'll be coming down in the middle of the day. The winter time, usually the afternoon is gonna be best. This is not nearly as large as that other one. It's a lot smaller fish. Boy, they hit it hard. Both of them hit it hard. Not a bad fish, but he's a lot smaller. <laughs> uh oh, oh, he got hung up. I got him loose, I got him loose. He's not much difference. Just looks like a twin. I don't think he could have swam back out there. Actually, this one's larger. <laughs> Actually, that one is larger. That's probably a little bit oh, too big to swing in the, on the bank like that. Wow, that's a bigger fish. You never know in the winter time because a lot of them fight a lot worse than others, but that is a gorgeous bass right there. You see that? I got down the grass a little bit when I got hung up. Now that's not coontail right there, that's just that old yucky grass. Get that off my bait, looky there. That's a nice solid five pound plus bass right there. Probably closer to six than he is to five actually. <laughs> yeah, when it got hung up, it got hung up in a brush pile down there. And that's what this grass right here got on it. You see how I got my, see how I got my jig Hairs spread out there, flared out. Flare them out like that, we get a lot more hookups, a lot better hook set. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna keep chunking. <laughs> way out there. Feed the line out, let her go all the way down to the bottom. I first saw Tommy Martin doing that one time. He was pitching about 10 foot out in front of the boat, and he would, he'd pitch out there and he'd peel line off every time, and I was fishing close by him. And finally I said, Tommy, you're sure getting a lot of backlashes. He said, I'm not getting any backlashes at all. What are you talking about? And I said, I see you pulling out line every time you pitch. And he said, I'm doing that so my bait will fall right straight down. He said, I'm not pitching out there but about 10 foot. I want it going right straight down to the bottom. I don't want it falling back toward the boat. And so especially when you're throwing out there in 
20 foot of water like I am there. Actually, probably where I, was, where I threw those last two or three throws, probably 22 or 23 feet. And uh, so you peel that line out. It falls 22 feet, it's going to fall quite a bit back toward the dock. And uh, so I let that line, I peel it out. That way it falls right straight down. That way it's, it's way out there, way out there, and I got a long ways to work it back. I try to hit a piece of brush. Here's another fish. Oh, golly. Anytime I can feel some brush, that's when I really slow it down, really work on it. This is amazing. Best day I've had is five. I've caught three. <laughs> this is amazing. So many days I don't even get a bite. It's another nice one, too. It's hard to tell till you get them up close, but he's a nice one. They're not giants, but they're big fish. Oh yeah, oh it's bigger. Bigger yet, bigger yet, look at that. Bigger. Oh, look at that guy. You look at that guy. This is a good way to break rods. Oh my goodness. He's bigger, bigger. That is well over six pounds right there. God, look at the mouth on that fish. Look at the mouth on that fish. Little lucky strike jig. Oh, that is well over six pounds. That is a giant right there. Goodness sakes alive. Holy cow. Wow. Ah. That's fishing for January, sports fans. That is some fishing for January. Whoa, I can't wait to get that thing back out there. I'm throwing right at that tree out there. Not getting anywhere close to that tree. Peeling it down, letting it fall till it all the way it hits the bottom. And basically, I'm kind of crawling that jig across the bottom. I'm popping it up a little bit, but very, very short movements. Well, he knocked the snot out of it. I mean, they're hitting it so hard, it's amazing. Oh, look at that hog. This might be bigger yet. So far, every one of them has been bigger. No, he's not. It's hard to tell. They're so stout and so big. Look at that fish, though. That's a big old fish. I don't think he's quite as big as that last one I caught. I'm going to break my line doing this. I know, or break the rod one. Jeez. Now, well, finally, they got smaller. Every one of them got bigger up to that one. I mean, and you know. There's nothing wrong with that fish. That's a five pound bass. <laughs> nothing wrong with that fish at all. Mm. Let me show you something on this jig. Let me show you something on this jig. You saw my little trailer fall off right here. Now here's something else you can do with this jig. And the reason the trailer fell off is, of course, it's small. And so all of this is tore up and won't stay on. I'm going to bite that part of it off. And I'm just going to take and come in here and hook right in here. And hook just that little end on there. Now it's going to look a little different in the water, but uh, but that's all. You can just use that little end. Let's see if we can catch another one on it. I made a few throws there and didn't catch a fish. I got down in that brush then. Got down in that brush right then and come through it. And sure enough, another one got it. I'd come all the way through the brush. He might have been following it. I want to throw a crankbait out there too so bad I can taste it. Right now I'm tasting that worm I bit off, Nate. Okay, boys and girls, looks like we wore out our welcome here for a while, but wow, what a deal. Four bass, four bass and all big ones too. I tell you what, that little jig is hard to beat. There's absolutely no doubt about it. I am going to put this rod and reel up and get up there and we got a lot of stuff to do today. But I've got one thing off of my list and that one thing is a dock tackle box. And I now have me a dock tackle box. Now, that'll be a moving target, like I said. I've got to put quite a bit more soft plastics in it. I put that one box of soft plastics. I'll, uh, I'll get my autograph pen out and, and label all those boxes and kind of tell a little bit what's in them. And three or four of them are just gonna say potpourri because you can just, you pick a lot of stuff in them. But I got some good stuff down here to play with now. Got some good baits for my grandkids and my grandkids' grandkids to lose. <laughs> See you later, I love you.